Greetings, beloved, and welcome to the R Spot. This is the place where we discuss everything about relationships. And in this, our last offering for the year 2016, I want to talk about a very important and often very stressful relationship, our relationship with money. <laughs> now, as we enter the season of merriment and giving, or shall I say stressing and buying, it's important to understand and expand our relationship with money. You see, we live in a society where most of us have been trained and conditioned to believe what are called four myths about money. I want to address those. Myth number one, there's not enough money to go around. How many of us believe that? Uh, myth number two, more money is better. Well, that seems to make perfectly good sense until you get to myth number three which is, I have to work hard to get money. And then, myth number four, that's just the way it is, it'll always be that way, and there's absolutely nothing I can do about it except to work hard and hope I can get enough to stay afloat. Now, these myths create a way of thinking and living that's based on unexamined and unconscious assumptions that create a consciousness of scarcity and fear that gets heightened at certain times of the year. Now, when it comes to money, so many of us are resigned and discouraged. We attach our personal value and sense of worth to the amount of money or cash that we have or that we have access to. Then we are pressured by cultural beliefs that often uses money in a way that doesn't support us in becoming the best of who we are. And these cultural conditions of stress and upset and, and lack and fear that are often attached to money are constructed on a foundation of falsehoods, lies. You see, human beings created money, which means it's not a part of the natural order that the creator, God, source put in place. Money is now used as a way to dominate, control, manipulate, and marginalize individuals and certain groups of individuals in a matter that really impedes our psychological, emotional, and personal power. A radical and often unbelievable truth is this. You have access to all the money you could ever want, need, or use. However, as long as you're chasing more money, you'll bypass your own value, worth, power, and the fullness of who you are, which is really what determines how much money you attract into your life. And I know that's a lot for some people, so let me say it again in another way. As long as you believe there's not enough money or that you don't have enough money, you will never get enough money to experience the peace, joy, comfort, freedom, and stability that you've been taught money will give you. And as long as we believe that we have to work hard to get money, we will never get enough work to get enough money to fill the lack that we believe always exists. Because no matter how hard I work, there just isn't enough money. And that's just the way it is. And there's nothing I can do about it. See how those myths operate? Yet, there are times, certain times of the week, the year, the month, that we'll go out and spend what we do not believe is enough and then stress because we don't have more. This is why so many people today are banging their heads against this invisible wall, trying to figure out what it is that they're doing wrong that prevents them from getting or having or holding on to money and more money. So let me break it down. Money is a medium of exchange that was created by human beings in order to get something you must give something. So in today's world, it's just not acceptable to exchange goats and chickens and, and cloth and rice to pay rent. So we use money. But money is energy. It represents the energy of security and freedom and comfort and control. When we have enough of the medium to exchange for the goods and services we need or desire, we feel secure. We experience more freedom to get more, and we make ourselves comfortable with the things that we have in our control. And in the process of getting and controlling through money, we are not taught 
to have a consciousness of abundance, an expectation of prosperity, or an attitude that manifests wealth. I want you to get those three words, consciousness, expectation, and attitude. Notice I didn't say what you do or what you don't do. So it's not just about your job or your level of education. It's not only about the conditions you were born into. Money represents my own natural energy yield. M-O-N-E-Y, your relationship with money, how much you have, how much you need, how much you chase is a function of your internal energy and beliefs about money. This means what's going on in your bank account is a function of your consciousness. And what's going on in your purse or your wallet is a function of your expectations. And what's going on on your credit report is a function of your attitude about yourself and about money. <laughs> now, this doesn't mean that we shouldn't work, nor does it mean that everyone should expect to be filthy rich. Have you ever noticed that filth is attached to richness? <laughs> but what this does mean is that we must recognize that the state of our financial affairs is an effect of our thinking and our believing because that's what determines what we have when it comes to money. You see, we have the power in our hands to create, attract, and hold everything that we desire. Yet we give it away to things that we believe will, will make us feel better. We'll buy a car or a dress without addressing our internal issues of esteem, value, and worth. We'll buy a house or take a vacation without giving a thought to the people we need to forgive. We buy our children things they don't need, but we often fail to allow them to express or speak their emotions. We'll work two jobs and still live in fear that we won't have enough, don't have enough, cannot have enough money to be secure, free, and comfortable. We place value on our relationships in response to what others have and what they give us. We will run our credit card limits to the max, but we won't give to a charitable cause. I mean, I could go on and on, not to beat us up, but to wake us up. Money, my own natural energy yield, M-O-N-E-Y, my consciousness, my expectations, and my attitudes. Now, if we continue to chase material wealth, we will continue to diminish our spiritual health and everything begins in spirit because that's what the Creator gave us. Yet, we somehow have gotten it twisted. It's your mind, your mindset, your beliefs, your attitude about who you are and what you can have that determine what you create and attract. So don't just work for money. Work to share your gifts, your talents, your abilities with the world. Work to share who you are with others. Work for someone who's providing good to the world. Work to make the world a better place. Know who you are and what you bring to the table. And you'll start to feel better about the work you do. And when you feel better, you think better. And when you think better, you attract better. Listen, even if your boss is a divine child of God, cleverly disguised as a raging lunatic, your energy, your attitude, your beliefs will either keep you stuck there or take you where you need to be in order to be appreciated, valued, and paid your worth. The issue is, do you know your worth? Do you know your value? Or are you just trying to get money to buy more things in an attempt to demonstrate that you are who you don't think you are? <laughs> are you holding yourself hostage to a culturally generated story about who you are and what you can and cannot have? Remember, money represents my own natural energy yield. The energy that I put out will yield me a result. And that's my consciousness, my expectations, and my attitudes. Listen, a few weeks ago, I was talking to someone who was complaining about their job. And I said, stop looking for a better job and start looking for a place where you can share the best of who you are. That person had a new place to work in three days. I kid you not. You see, we live the conversations we have about ourselves and about our lives and about our circumstances. So what's your conversation about money? 
because your conversation will create your reality. What is your conversation about what you deserve and what you can have? What I can share with you is this. Until you develop and nurture a loving relationship with yourself, as it relates to prosperity, abundance, and wealth, money will have very little to do with you. <laughs> money knows that you gossip about it, that you avoid talking about it, that you use it as a weapon, that you fear it or have a lustful greed for it, and that for many of us, we are out of integrity with money, spending what we don't have, discarding people who don't pay us back, while all the while we're not paying our bills on time. Remember, money is an energy, and energy is everywhere at all times present in its fullness. So before this year ends, let's get in right relationship with money and our thoughts about money. Toward that end, I want to give you a prosperity affirmation to consider. This affirmation comes from the Abundance Book by John Randolph Price. And it's a part of the Prosperity Mind Treatment that's offered by my institute, InnerVisions Institute. So if you want a copy of the money treatment, just send me an email to yanlasfixin at gmail.com. That's yanlas with an S dot fixins at gmail.com. And please put Prosperity Treatment in the subject line. I don't need your story. I don't need to know how hard you're working or how long you've been broke. Just put prosperity treatment in the subject line and we'll send one out to you. And you get to really get clear about your relationship with money. Now here's the affirmation. Take a breath. Money is not my supply. No person, place, or condition is my supply. My awareness understanding and knowledge of the all providing activity of the divine mind I am is my supply. My consciousness of this truth is unlimited. Therefore, my supply and all things good is unlimited. Now work with that until you believe it. Speak it, write it, think it until it becomes alive in your bones and changes your relationship, your perspective, and your understanding of money. Notice that in that affirmation, money was never mentioned. The word is supply. That which you need, that which you desire, it will be supplied. Money, my own natural energy yield, my consciousness, my expectation, and my attitudes. Think on these things and please do not overspend this holiday season. But I wish for you and your family a blessed, safe, and happy holiday and a new year. And I'll see you then. Be blessed. Until next time. Mm -hmm.